First quarter from Victoria Park in the match of the day. Absolutely superb conditions for football. It'll certainly be a survival of the fittest this afternoon. It was a huge game. They both won their first round games. And the AFL, through Geelong, didn't want to play the game at Victoria Park. Collingwood stood firm and said, we're, we're definitely staying there. And they tried to get it live on television. Couldn't quite happen. Didn't quite get the, that off the ground. But it was a huge build up to the game. The first thing you do when you play Geelong is just think Gary Ablett. You know, they had good midfielders too, but you'd have a few sleepless nights as a coach just uh, worrying about what, what he could do and how he did it. He had great hands and obviously wonderful leap and, I mean, you know, what do you say, he's a, he's a superstar. And Gavin Brown played on him that day, so Gavin drew the short straw. Gavin Brown can just about play anywhere on the ground and with great effects. You know he can mark in a pack, but he wasn't a big man, so basically can, you, can we try and uh, match his athleticism and his agility at ground level? That's why Gavin Brown got the unenviable job a couple of times of going back, because Gavin was a really, I mean, Gavin didn't play defence much, but he was a fantastically sort of talented, athletic, agile, strong player. That was so exciting in the way they played their footy, um, full out attack, and I think Blighty actually loved that. He was tearing his hair out, and his hair was getting a little bit uh, shallow at the time, uh, and he said the only thing that he couldn't stop that day was Dacos. To the ground, Dacos has got it. Peter Dacos on the left foot, oh, have a look at this, what a great goal. Come to Vic Park and see Ablett versus Dacos, oh, you just, you pay money, you just pay heaps of money to go see it. Both of them could create something out of nothing, um, in a very different way. Ablett was a lot of the ways through sheer force and brute strength in a lot of ways, whereas Dacos was more graceful, far more graceful in doing that. The goal creation and the goal scoring is just what he was a genius at, Dacos. And he came with this terrific balance. He could turn right, he could turn left. That didn't, you know, so he could go into his left foot fine. Um, so therefore that balance in the confined area was what his uh, specialty was and, and the unbelievable sort of hand to foot control. You know, I went into the year with a lot of doubt and you know, sort of the years were sort of catching up with me. So it was nice to get on the end of a few. I think we started badly and then I got pushed um, back closer to goal. Tap down by Hanley, but snap it goal! Everyone talks about the great small forwards of today, but you throw Peter Dacos in and he was not only a great midfielder, an uh, extraordinary midfielder of his time, but then became one of the great small forwards as well. That day, his best goal came from three bounces and when he was pinned up against the boundary line. What I can recall about it is I needed to get a bit of a hurry on and get as close to the goal as possible. I probably took um, a couple of bounces and then just let sail. From the boundary line, loves them from there it's a miraculous goal. It was a great win. Um, clearly winning at Victoria Park was always nice. And then, you know, the, the, the scalp was a, was a big scalp. They played off in finals. And I think they went on to play in finals in 92. And the other reason I remember it is I actually did my knee in the game um, just before half time where I, I remember Mickey McGuan kicked the ball to me and I ended up landing awkwardly and I ended up um, banging the knee into the turf. So I did a cartilage, but then I knocked a uh, bit of bone off off the top of my knee. And especially looking back now, I know full well that was probably the end of the career. Dakes had so many injuries over the years. We thought he would last forever and get over those particular injuries, which he, he used to be able to do. But we did know it was probably coming towards the end. Well, it's just difficult. It's not so much the coaching point of view, it's the human, sort of the human point of view. I mean, as a coach, you, you probably think you're losing an asset because when they're, when they're fit and well, they're such an asset, but either age or injury, every player eventually you know, eventually wears out. And it's incredible to think that he kicked eight goals that day and that was his last, it was only a few games before the end of the season and that was it for him, it was all over. In hindsight, that game, as good as it was at the time, probably stands out even more now as a real game to, to savour and cherish. Every maestro needs a final symphony and Peter Dacos, that was his final symphony. Full might of the Victoria Park crowd right behind you after another superb or miraculous goal, whatever you want to describe it as, he is just one hell of a good footballer.